the ancient lake bed that rewrote human history. Up to 30,000 years ago, this corner of southeastern Australia was a paradise. Fish swam in the deep freshwater lakes, giant versions of kangaroos and flightless birds grazed around the lush surrounding vegetation. And in sheltered camps, people lived peaceful lives without want. Perhaps children played, splashing about in the water in the lake's edge, while adults chatted about the day's hunt and cooked their evening meals on open fires. Then 16,000 years ago, the lakes dried up and became the arid land of dunes and scrubby bush it is today. Gone are the fish and large mammals that live there. Only the people, the aboriginal Pakanchi, the Muti Muti, and the Nagayampa tribes of the region remain. The place is now known as Lake Mungo National Park, a World Heritage Park that holds a very special place in human history. It was here at Lake Mungo that Mungo Man, the oldest human skeleton outside of Africa, and Mungo Lady, whose remains bear one of the earliest examples of ritual cremation anywhere on Earth, were discovered. Since they were found in 1974 and 1969 respectively, they have been used to amass a wealth of information about Australia's earliest inhabitants and prehistoric peoples in general. One of the most important results to come out of the discovery of Mungo Man is the revising of the date Aborigines were thought to have arrived in Australia by at least 30,000 years. As well as that, the remains have prompted debate on prehistoric migration patterns and even the evolution of mankind as a whole. The controversy continues as to whether Mungo Man and Mungo Lady are proof of a single migration to Australia or if they constitute evidence for ancestors of today's Aborigines coming over in different waves. Carbon dating puts the time of Mungo Lady's death at about 26,000 years ago, toward the end of Lake Mungo's most fertile period. At the time of her burial, she was obviously someone deserving special attention. Her remains were cremated, the remaining bones crushed and burnt a second time. The care and effort put into her burial gives us some perspective on the status of Aboriginal women in her era. Mungo Man was about 50 years old when he died, a very respectable age for the time. He was also tall and estimated 6 foot 5 inches. We also know he was plagued with arthritis, which may have been the result of repeatedly throwing spears during hunting. After carefully placing his body in its grave, Mungo Man was sprinkled with okra, the first known incidence of such ritual burial in the world. The dating of his bones remains controversial, but the consensus is that his death occurred around 40,000 years ago. Many layers cover the Lake Mungo area, dating back to sediments deposited 100,000 years ago. The layer of the most archaeological interest is called the Mungo layer, laid down between 25,000 and 50,000 years ago. This layer held Mungo Man and Mungo Lady, as well as tools, fireplaces, and the most numerous Pleistocene Ice Age footprints found anywhere. The prints are remarkably well preserved and were made by a group of adults, teenagers, and children walking across what was then soft clay pan. A family on the move, perhaps? During the peak of human habitation, Lake Mungo was only one of a series of lakes along what is now known as Willandra Creek. Lake Mungo itself was over 20 kilometers long, 10 wide and 15 meters deep. Mussel shells and fish bones found in ancient middens or rubbish heaps around the lake are testament to the abundance of life it contained and supported. It's hard to imagine what it must have been like back then when the lakes were full. Today the land is arid. The most distinctive feature is lunettes, semi-circular fixed dunes that stretch across the eastern side of the dried lake. Many years ago, Chinese shepherds in the area named these the Walls of China, and the name is stuck. Thousands of years of erosion have carved the lunettes into interesting shapes, and winds blowing loose sand have created mini dunes behind them. It's an eerie place, isolated from the closest town by about 75 kilometers. The atmosphere is strong, sometimes described as otherworldly. Visitors are encouraged to take knowledgeable guides with them when visiting, so as not to miss any of the natural and archaeological wonders of a place with such a long, continuous human history. Care of the land is shared between government, conservation organizations, and elders from the original tribal occupiers of the area. The preservation of this World Heritage Park is being taken very seriously in light of its historical importance to both Australia and the rest of the world. 
Archaeology here continues and more surprising finds may yet be discovered in this ancient lake bed Mungo lady lies in a vault requiring two sets of keys for access one set is held by tribal elders one by scientists Mungo man is still being studied by the Australian National University Aboriginal leaders hope in time to give both Mungo man and Mungo lady traditional reburials in the place where they lived and died so many thousands of years ago